Hydrogen is everywhere. But if I'm honest with you, I really don't see pure hydrogen much in my day-to-day -day life. So why are so many people talking about it and why is it so important to our future? In this video, I'll walk you through the life of hydrogen from the place it's created all the way to the place it helps us do life. So let's go. So where is hydrogen? It actually is everywhere around us in water, in oil, in gas, in coal, and the list goes on and on and on. Hydrogen does float around in the air by itself, but it's only about 1 20th of 1 1,000th of a percent of the air. That's not very much. So if we want hydrogen, we have to get it from water or from a fossil fuel like natural gas. The cheapest way to make hydrogen is from natural gas in one of these plants. The process is something like this. The methane from natural gas is mixed with steam under pressure and the result is carbon, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. That's the first reaction that produces hydrogen. But we can do more. If you take this carbon monoxide from this first process and then you mix it with more steam in a catalyst, we can get more hydrogen. And the byproduct this time is carbon dioxide. At the end of it all, we're left with hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and some other impurities. Of course, the carbon dioxide and impurities are removed from the hydrogen, leaving it to be bottled into canisters and sold. This is the way almost all of our hydrogen is made today. But as you probably figured out, there's a catch. It produces a lot of carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is not good, especially if it gets into the atmosphere. So that was generating hydrogen from natural gas. What about the other one? Hydrogen from water. Well, a lot of companies building a hydrogen plant today are actually planning to get it from water. In a plant like this. It looks pretty boring, but what happens on the inside is cool. The method they use most often is electrolysis. It costs more, than the previous process that I described, but it doesn't involve carbon dioxide at all, and that's good. Really, all that's happening is we're breaking apart hydrogen and oxygen in H2O, or water, with electricity. There's some cool things with ion charges and membranes that are used to separate the hydrogen and oxide, oxygen, but the idea is pretty simple. Electricity breaks apart the water molecules, and the membrane and ion stuff it keeps the two gases apart so you can bottle them up for sale. That's how hydrogen is made, from either water or natural gas. Now, what do we do with hydrogen? Today, almost all hydrogen is used for industrial processes like refining petroleum, treating metals, producing fertilizer, and a bunch of other things. But what we're going to use hydrogen for is way more interesting. It could be the new way to move energy around the world. Kind of like how we use electricity to move energy around today. From energy production to where it's used, like your house. Let me explain. The only real clean option we have for moving energy around today is electricity. And that's why there's so much attention and investment going into electricity grids. Electric vehicles, electric heating, and really almost anything electric. It may not be a good idea though to put all of our eggs in the electricity basket. That's where hydrogen comes in. In the same way that electricity can be generated using green generation, we can also produce hydrogen with green production. In the same way that we can use electricity to drive vehicles and heat homes, we can also use hydrogen to drive vehicles and heat homes. And in the same way that you, we use transmission lines to move electricity, we can use hydrogen pipelines and tankers to move hydrogen around. Now there's a lot of details that make hydrogen and electricity different, and there's still some glitches to work out to make sure that hydrogen doesn't break our pipelines or tankers. But it's important to start with a foundation of how electricity and hydrogen are similar in our energy ecosystem. Now, 
Let's talk about hydrogen's sweet spot and where it helps us out a lot. The first sweet spot for hydrogen is using it to drive vehicles. The way this works is that hydrogen from the vehicle storage tank feeds a fuel cell which generates electricity and then the electricity drives an electric motor to power the vehicle. Now filling up the storage tank is super fast, similar to a gas tank. And you can travel about 300 miles between fills, similar to what you do today. And the only exhaust coming out of the vehicle is steam or water. Hydrogen fuel cells can be scaled up to power almost any size of vehicle. And because there's no mechanical gears or combustion, the vehicles run very quietly. The second sweet spot for hydrogen is generating electricity. That might sound a bit odd since we're starting by using electricity to create hydrogen from water. But think about how often there's a gap between where and when electricity is generated and where and when it's being used. Hydrogen can be used to store energy and then transport it to another time and place where it can become electricity again. This is great for backup generators, space exploration, and maybe even electric grid stabilization. A third sweet spot for hydrogen is launching rockets. <laughs> now NASA has been using hydrogen for rocket fuel since the 1950s. And with increased popularity of space again, this may be a significant use for hydrogen. Slightly related is the idea of hydrogen airplanes as well. Hydrogen is very explosive and harnessing that explosiveness can be good if you need a lot of power in a short amount of time. In summary, hydrogen can be generated from fossil fuels using steam or from water using electrolysis. Similar to electricity, hydrogen can be a clean carrier of power from where it's created to where the power is used. And finally, Hydrogen is useful to power vehicles of all types, it can fuel electric generators, and it works as fuel for rockets and other combustion processes. Hydrogen is a versatile carrier of energy to wherever we need it. Many of the systems used to work with hydrogen are already being used today by the petroleum industry. So if you'd like to learn more about the data and security systems needed to make hydrogen ecosystems work, you could visit cisco.com slash go slash oil and gas. And much of what you find there applies to hydrogen as well. Take care.